In the previous section we looked at project information and the importance of that in terms of initially setting up a project like this one. You'll soon get used to the fact that it's very very important that you always make sure you've got either your project start date or your project finish date defined before you do any significant amount of work on a new project. Now I'm going to add some more tasks to this project but before I do we also need to look at a couple of settings in project options. Now you should remember that we access project options from backstage view so click on file, options and then the page we want in this case is the schedule page. So the section we need is this one, scheduling options for this project. Note that there is a drop down at the top there, housebuild01.mpp it currently says. If I click on the drop down I get a choice between the options for all new projects or the options for this specific project. Now at this stage I'm only going to work on the options for this specific project but it may well be that you always do have the same options in this section for all of your projects in which case make sure you've got them the same in the all new projects case. But let's just look at this specific project now so select that. Earlier on we set up new tasks are created auto scheduled. The second item here is auto scheduled tasks are scheduled on. This means when I enter a new task into the schedule and it's an auto scheduled task which is the default on which date is the task scheduled to begin. And the task is scheduled to begin on the project start date. Now there are actually two options here. Project start date is one. The other one is current date and I'm going to choose current date. That means that when I enter an auto scheduled task it will be scheduled to begin on today's date, the date that I'm actually entering the task. Now alongside that the duration will be entered in and you can choose units for duration. You can choose minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. For this building type project days is a pretty good option because you mostly mend those things in numbers of days. But obviously if you were dealing with a very short term project, very short term tasks, you might want to go for minutes or hours. Maybe a much bigger more strategic type of project you may want tasks to be in weeks or months. Days is the option we're going to use here. I'll come back to this work is entered in and default task type and new tasks are effort driven. I'll come back to all that when we talk about work a little bit later on in the course. But there are a couple of other options here that we need to look at now. The pair of options we need to look at is this little pair on the right here. Show that scheduled tasks have estimated durations and new scheduled tasks have estimated durations. And this pair of options is what's caused the behavior we've seen so far, whereby whenever we insert a new task it has an estimated duration. It's estimated at one day. I quite like this option because it means that when a task is inserted there's a question mark on the duration that just reminds me that I need to put my own hopefully more accurate and realistic estimate in there. And until I've put my proper estimate in there that question mark just acts as a bit of a sort of aid memoir that I still need to put my estimate in. So I generally have both of those checked and basically having checked that they're set I'm now going to enter one or two more of the tasks for this project. So click on OK and away we go. So the next task is that one. Let's click away. Lay foundations. I'm going to allow 15 days for that. OK. Now I can see a problem because I can't actually see that task. I'm currently looking at the first one, a 10 day task from early March. It doesn't actually show the end of March. So I'm going to use that zoom control that we looked at earlier on. At the right hand end of the status bar, if I click on the minus, it zooms out. Watch what happens when I click on the minus. I zoom out of the time frame. Let's use the slider to just slide along. Let's zoom out one more step. And now I can see the beginnings of my building project. And note that the new task, the lay foundation task, has actually been added with its start date today because I set the option 
of new tasks get a start date of current date. Now I don't necessarily need that gap that I've got now between my tasks so let me just click on that date picker again and say that can start a week earlier. Now I'm then given this option from what's called the planning wizard in project 2013 and what the planning wizard does as I work is to try to spot for me anything I may have missed. Now what it thinks has happened now is it's seen me put in a first task and a second task. The second task is starting just after the first task and it's saying maybe these should be linked. Maybe you should be saying that that second task can start when the first one's finished. Now when it suspects that there could be a linkage between these two tasks it gives me a choice. It says you can link them so that lay foundation will always follow prepare site or you can move lay foundation without adding a link. Now for the moment I'm going to move them without adding a link. I'm just going to click on OK. We'll come to links a little bit later on. And now it's just moved that so that I haven't got that big gap between the two tasks. There is a gap but it actually corresponds to the weekend. So let me put in the next task build walls I'm going to say 10 days now note in this case that that's overlapping laying the foundations now we're clearly going to have to fix that later on because generally speaking you're not going to be able to start on the walls until the foundations are set but we'll worry about that little one a little bit later on so I could carry on now and add the other two main tasks that I'm going to put in at this stage but first of all I'd like to show you one other thing if you go back into backstage view down into the options and on the display page one of the options right at the bottom there is entry bar check entry bar click on OK and you get an entry bar it's a bar it's a bit like the entry bar in Excel if you're used to using Excel and instead of typing into the task name or in fact any other cell in this table you can type in the entry bar instead. So my next task is fit windows and doors. When I've typed what I want to type I can click on the tick to commit the change or on the cross to cancel it. So I'm going to click on the tick at this stage and that's an alternative to clicking elsewhere within the Gantt chart in general in order to commit a piece of typing. Click in the next cell and again you note that the one day question mark is selected. I can just click in the entry bar and change that say to 12 days. Click on tick. Some people prefer to use the entry bar than typing directly into the table here. I actually quite like using the entry bar but I pretty much use either depending on the situation that I'm in. If you don't want to use the entry bar it does take up a little bit of space on the screen. If you don't need it you just switch it on and off in the project options as you saw just now. And talking of saving some space, what I'm going to do now is to switch off the timeline because I'm not going to be using it for the moment. Go to the view tab on the ribbon and in the split view group uncheck timeline. And then I'm going to put in the fifth of these tasks. The fifth task is going to be fit roof and that's going to be another 15 day task. And in this case I'm just going to type in there 15 days. Note that's also scheduled starting today. A bit of work to do on my schedule obviously but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Now in case you've had any trouble following this so far I'm now going to save this project file as the first of the example files that are available to you that came with the course. Just show you again you can do a file save as. This time I'm going to the folder that has the accompanying files in it and that is the one it's SSI project 2013 example 01.mpp save there and then before I finish this section just one other thing if you go into backstage view and the info tab on the right you'll see project information 
This gives summary information about the project that I'm working on. So in this case it says the start date is March 4th, finish date is now April 12th. So according to my current building schedule that's when the last task will finish. I know that's not right but that will be corrected as we go along. And then there's information like schedule from, current date, start date, when it was last modified, today the project calendar priority. If I click on the arrow to the right of project information I see that I have project statistics that we'll look at later but I also have advanced properties. Now with the advanced properties I can set some properties that are really more related to the file than they are to the actual workings of Microsoft Project. So apart from showing me this file name I can put it in a subject, the author, and I suggest that as you work on your projects you put your own author name in there. Bear in mind that if you set up your project options with your author name anyway it will appear in there by default. So when you've entered or reviewed any of these properties click on OK and then of course after you've finished changing any of those properties you need to go back and do another save. You can use the save button on the quick access toolbar. So that's the first of the sample files. If you open that now you should get a project that's exactly where this one is. That's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you're looking to become an effective project manager and you need training for MS Project 2013, you can get 19 hours of training offered by Simon Says It. That includes beginner and advanced training for Microsoft Project 2013. For a limited time only, you can get both of those courses for only $17. So go right now and check the About section below this video with the details. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to our YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. I'll see you next week with additional videos.